Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another Saturday night dars. Tonight we'll be inshallah reading from the 23rd word which is about the virtues of Iman. Inshallah we can all benefit together. Ala Rasulina salawat. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful. Indeed, we have created a man, the most excellent of patterns. Then we sent him down to the lowest of the low, except those who believe and do good deeds. Through the light of Iman, man rises to the highest of the high and acquires a value worthy of Jannah. And through the darkness of unbelief, of kufr, he descends to the lowest of the low and falls to a position fit for Jahannam. For Iman connects man to the all-glorious Maker. It is a relation. For Iman connects man to the all-glorious Maker. It is a relation. Thus, man acquires value by virtue of the divine arts and inscriptions of the dominical names, the divine arts of Allah's names, which become apparent in him, which show in him through Iman. So one, when one has Iman, then the dominical names which are present in him become apparent. That Iman connects man to Allah Azawajal. His value then is only in respect to the matter of his physical being. When unbelief severs the relation and due to that severance, the dominical art is concealed. When one does kufr, when one becomes a kafir, the unbelief severs the relation. And due to that severance, the dominical art, the dominical names of Allah Azawajal is concealed. His value then is only in respect to the matter of his physical being. And since this matter has only a transitory, passing, temporary animal life, its value is virtually nothing. The physical being which we have in this life without the Iman which connects us to Allah Azawajal is transitory, passing, temporarily animalistic and its value is virtually nothing. We shall explain this mystery by means of a comparison. For example, among man's arts, the value of the materials used and that of the arts are entirely different. The painting does not cost as much as the paint. Sometimes they are equal. Sometimes the material is more valuable. And sometimes it happens that the $5,000 worth of art is to be found in material like iron worth $5. If we look at a Picasso painting which is worth a million dollars, whereas if we took that to the dump, it would only be costing about $5 in terms of the materials needed to construct that painting. Sometimes even an antique work of art is worth a million dollars, whilst the material used to make that painting is not worth $5. If such a work of art is taken to the antiques markets and ascribed to a brilliant and accomplished artist such as Picasso and announced mentioning the artist and that art, it may be sold for a million dollars. 
A painting which only used up $5 worth of materials, if ascribed to a painter like Picasso, can be sold for about a million dollars. Whereas, if that same painting was taken to the scrap dealer to the tip, the only price received will be for, it will be for the $5 worth of iron. Thus, man is an antique work of art. Man is an antique work of art of Allah Azawajal. He is a most subtle and graceful miracle of His power whom He created to manifest, to show all His names and their inscriptions and their meanings in the form of a miniature specimen of the universe. If the light of Iman enters a human all the meaningful inscriptions on him may be read. If the light of Iman enters a person, all the meaningful names of Allah Azawajal and their meanings may be read on him. As one who believes, he reads them consciously, knowingly, and through that relation, causes others to read them too. As one who believes, he recognizes Allah's names and he reads them with their meanings consciously, with mental effort. And through that relation, he causes others around him to read them too. That is to say, the dominical art in man becomes apparent through meanings like, I am the creature and artifact of the all-glorious maker. I manifest his rahmah, his mercy and his munificence. That is, belief, iman, which consists of being connected to Allah Azawajal, the maker, makes apparent all the works of art in man. Man's value is in accordance with that dominical art and by virtue of being a mirror to the eternally besought one. Man's value, our true value, is in accordance with that dominical art and by virtue through understanding that we are, we are a mirror to Allah Azawajal's names and their meanings. In this respect, through that connection, the insignificant man, a powerless man, becomes God's addressee. Allah Azawajal addresses him and he becomes a guest of the sustainer, worthy of Jannah, superior to all other creatures. However, should unbelief, should disbelief, should kufr, which consists of the severance of the relation, which consists of stopping the relationship of Allah Azawajal, enter man's being, should one person actively be an unbeliever, then all of those meaningful inscriptions, all the meaningful names of Allah Azawajal, of the divine names, are plunged into darkness and become illegible. Through acting out in kufr, through disbelieving, we are plunging Allah Azawajal's names into darkness and we make them illegible. For if the Maker is forgotten, for if the Creator, the Maker is forgotten, the spiritual aspects which look to Him will not be comprehended. They will as though be reversed. 
For if the Maker, for if Allah is forgotten, the spiritual aspect whereby we see Allah names and we notice Allah will be severed. Through the disremembrance of Allah because they will not be comprehended, they will be reversed. The majority of those meaningful, sublime arts and elevated inscriptions of Allah names will be hidden. The remainder, those that may be seen with the eye, will be attributed to lowly causes, nature, chance, and will become utterly devoid of value. The human body, if not given to Allah Azawajal, will be attributed to lowly causes such as nature, which is said to be chance, and will become utterly devoid of value. The value of the human will fall to an insignificant animal, whereas with Iman we become the prince, the king of the universe. His importance looks only to his animal, physical being, if there is no relationship with Allah Azawajal. And as we said, the aim and fruit of his physical being is only to pass a brief, a short and partial life as the most impotent, needy and grieving of animals. Which Sayyid Nursi explains in another area, which is the, actually the human mind whereby it undergoes depression because we see all our beloved friends and family constantly in pain and in agony. Then it decays and departs. The human body, which passes a brief, partial life as impotent, needy and grieving, decays and departs. See how unbelief destroys human nature and transforms the person from a diamond into a coal. Belief is both light and strength. Iman is both light and strength. Yes, one who acquires true belief, true Iman, may challenge the whole universe and be saved from the pressure of events in accordance with the strength of his Iman. The one who acquires, the one who understands and attains true Iman may challenge the whole world and be saved from the pressures of these events in accordance with the strength of his Iman. By having tawakkul and saying, I praise my trust in Allah, he travels through the mountainous waves of events in the ship of life. He travels through his life in complete safety, knowing that he is being watched over by Allah Azawajal. He entrusts, he trusts all his burdens to the hand of power, to the absolutely powerful one. He voyages through the world in ease, then takes his rest in the intermediate realm after he passes away. Later, he may fly up to heaven, to Jannah, in order to enter eternal happiness. After having tawakkul and going through this life by trusting in Allah and following his iman and worshipping Allah through the way in which he wants, he flies up to paradise in order to enter eternal happiness. Otherwise, if he does not rely on Allah Azawajal, rather than flying, the burdens of this world, the pains of this world, 
the struggles of this world will drag him down to the lowest of the low. That is to say, Iman necessitates affirmation of divine unity. Affirmation of divine unity necessitates submission to Allah. Submission to Allah necessitates reliance on Allah. And reliance on Allah necessarily leads to happiness in this world and the next. Iman necessitates affirmation of divine unity of Allah Azza wa Jal's Tawheed. Affirmation of divine unity necessitates submission to Allah Azza wa Jal, submitting to His orders. Submission to Allah's orders necessitates reliance on Allah. And through relying on Allah Azza wa Jal, by entrusting all his burdens to the hand of power, it leads to happiness in this world and the next. But do not misunderstand this. Reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal is not to reject causes altogether. It is not to become lazy and say Allah Azza wa Jal will take care of me. It is rather to know that causes in our life, things that happen in our life are a veil to the hand of Qudra of Allah and have recourse to them. Allah Azza wa Jal looks after us through the causes which are a veil to his hand of power and has recourse to them. So we must still work in our daily lives just as Allah Azza wa Jal wants us. And Allah Azza wa Jal through the causes in this universe will open up our way. Knowing that attempting causes, knowing that trying is a sort of active prayer and active dua. It is to seek the effects only from Allah Azza wa Jal. When we do an action, we must seek the benefits and the reward only from Allah Azza wa Jal. Recognize that the results in our life, whatever we do, whether it's a promotion at work, anything simple, whether it's the food that we eat daily, it's to understand and recognize that the results are from Him alone and to be thankful to Him. And to understand that Allah Azza wa Jal is giving all of these Benefits to us through different causes. Those who place their trust in Allah and those who do not resemble two men in this story. One time, two men loaded heavy burdens onto both their backs and heads. They bought a ticket and boarded a large ship. As soon as they boarded the ship, one of them left his heavy load onto the deck. He put his luggage down. He sat on it and he guarded it. The other, however, since he was both stupid and arrogant, did not put down his luggage. He continued holding it on his back and on his head. When he was told, leave that heavy load on the deck and be comfortable. When he was told to put his luggage down onto the boat. The man said, no, I will not put it down. It might get lost. I am strong. I will guard my property by carrying it on my back and my head. He was told again. This reliable royal ship, which is carrying you, and us, is stronger than you are. It can protect it better than you can. You may get giddy and fall into the sea 
together with your load. Anyway, you will gradually lose your strength and by degrees, those loads will get heavier and your bent back and brainless head will not have the power to carry them. After a certain while on their journey, he said you're going to get tired and those luggage which you are carrying is going to tie you down and you are going to lose. And if the captain sees you in this state, he will either say that you are crazy and expel you from the ship, or he will think you are ungrateful, accusing our ship and jeering at us. He will order you to be put into prison. Also, you are making a fool of yourself in front of everyone. For the perceptive see that you are displaying weakness through your conceit, impotence through your pride, and abasement and hypocrisy through your pretense. You have made yourself a laughing stock in the eyes of the people. Everyone is laughing at you. Whereupon the unfortunate man who was holding his luggage came to his senses. He put down his load on the deck and sat on it. He said to the other, May Allah be pleased with you. I've been saved from that difficulty, from prison and from making a fool of myself. O oh man who does not place his trust in Allah Azawajal. You are displaying weakness through your conceit. You are displaying impotence through your pride. You are displaying abasement and hypocrisy through your pretense. You have made yourself a laughing stock in the eyes of the people. You too come to your senses like that man in the story and place your trust in him so that you too may be delivered from begging before all the universe, trembling before every event, from pride making a fool of yourself, misery in the hereafter, and the prison of the pressures of the world. Belief makes man into man. Indeed, it makes man into a king. Since this is so, man's basic duty is Iman and Dua. This belief, Kuf, makes him into an extremely impotent beast. Yes, these differences show that humanity becomes humanity through Iman. For when animals come into the world, they come complete in all points in accordance with their abilities, as though they have been perfected in another world. That is, they are sent. They learn all the conditions of their lives, their relationships with the universe, the laws of life in either two hours or two days or two months, and they become proficient in them. Animals like sparrows and bees acquire in 20 days the power to survive and proficiency in their actions that mankind only acquires in 20 years. That is, they are inspired with them. This means animals' fundamental duty is not to be perfected through learning and progress by acquiring knowledge nor to seek help and offer supplications through displaying their impotence. But in accordance 
with their abilities to work and act. Their duty is active worship. This means that a man came into this world to be perfected by means of knowledge and supplication. Mankind came into this world to be perfected by means of knowledge, by obtaining knowledge and dua, supplication. In regard to his nature and abilities, Everything is tied to knowledge. And the foundation, the source, the light and spirit of all true knowledge is the knowledge of Allah Azza The knowledge of God. The king of all knowledge is knowledge of God. And the essence and basis of man's life can only lay in Iman Billah, the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. Thank you for tuning in for another week, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we all benefited all together. Allah Azza wa Jal, Fatiha.